So I basically signed away my life to this degree. Hello everybody, welcome to Speak With Domi. Thank you so much for joining me. If it's your first time here, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a place where we chat all things alive. So in today's video, I wanted to chat about five things that I wish I knew before getting into psychology. I'm about four years in, I'm doing my honors this year, but there are definitely some things that I wish that I knew before um, getting into psychology and I'm ready to share them with you. So without wasting any more time, let us get into today's video. Number one, I really wish I knew how competitive, you know, this degree and just this field is in its entirety. And the reason that I'm saying that is because I moved from medicine, which is already known to be very competitive, your marks need to be high for you to get in. And then I went to psychology. So it was easy for me to think, oh, okay, psychology is the easier way out. I mean, it's even in the, it's in the arts um, faculty, humanities faculty. So you think, you know, everybody made fun of, you know, the degrees in that faculty because it was easier or because you have less classes, that means you have more time to be chilling on the lawn and chilling outside where most people have classes throughout the day and sometimes don't even get a break. So it was easy for me to think, okay, this is the easier way out. But that is actually not the truth because of how competitive this degree is, this qualification is for you to get to, um, you know, psychologist one day. It is really tough. And I'm speaking from the point of, you know, when you want to get in for undergrad, um, the the requirements are quite reasonable. You know, the APS score is not too high. You don't exactly need maths or science or anything like that. Um, however, once you do get in, for you to move from undergrad level to honors level, it is quite hectic because of the intake. And I'm speaking about this from a place of graduating cum laude and still having to go the private route to study my honors simply because I was not accepted at any varsity that I applied for. And trust me, I applied to almost everywhere. When the, when you know when it's time for me to apply, I really don't apply to less than ten universities. So that already should let you know how you know um, competitive the field is. And when you move on from honors level to master's level, it is even more competitive because depending on the varsity that you have applied to, they take about six to ten people just because the training is that intense, and they need to make sure that at the end of it, they've given you all the tools to become the best psychologist you know possible simply because you will literally basically carry people's lives in your hands especially those that come to you for help when you're a psychologist so they can't exactly make it easy for everybody to get in i get that so it is extremely 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 competitive yes getting in undergrad level might be a lot easier but don't let that fool you so when you get into psychology and when you start studying psychology be an overachiever. Work, 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 work. Be that person who wants to get those distinctions and who wants to aim for the moon and get those high marks. Um, don't let people mock you and say, you know what, just the 50% is enough. Trust me, it's not enough when it comes to this degree. So yeah, that's one of the things that I wish I knew. Number two. Yo, guys, psychology is long. <laughs> psychology you're like i feel like i've been studying for a very long time but i can't even think like that because i still have many more years to go that's why i get upset or get a bit uneasy when people ask me so when are you gonna be done studying and i'm like why would you say those things to me when i'm done like it agitates me to actually count the number of years left or count the number of years that it's going to take in its entirety. And I think once again, comparing to medicine, everybody knows, okay, it's a minimum of six years um, that you need to do medicine. For some people, it's gonna be a bit longer, but you really, you know, you know getting into it. But because psychology is divided up and it's not just put together as, for example, clinical psychology, and you go in and that's the degree that you're doing, because it's divided up, we tend to think, okay, um, it's gonna be shorter. And truth of the matter, it actually is not. It's three years undergrad, one year honors, and then after that you have 
um, masters which is two years but also there could be some delays because if you don't get in then there's other things that you might have to, there's another year where you might have to find something to do so literally it could be a lot longer than six years six years is the minimum and that's if everything goes smoothly but if not you are going to be here for quite a while and you know what's worse is that you never done exactly studying like you're constantly going to have to be learning and this is because um even when you're within the profession just because of how um there's new developments all the time people are constantly researching different things and different ways um you know to better people's mental health or just how to better the field and things constantly change you are constantly going to be learning and there's what is called the continuous professional development um so that is like basically a point system wherein you know they track that you're constantly learning or that you are constantly developing yourself as a psychologist so you you never really finish you never really stop 75 years later and the third thing is this is actually quite a big one you don't need maths but you need maths so you can get into psychology with maths lit which i think is the greatest news for a lot of people that struggle with maths um in fact um one of the psychologists i look up to she was like oh i was terrible at maths but she is in the field and she's doing well which is all good and great but it doesn't mean you get a pass on maths you really don't and um as i mentioned before you do need maths in this degree because there is a stats module now it's not impossible and i really don't think it's as difficult as people make out it make it out to be at least i it wasn't for me but when it came to final year stats i understood why the stats module gives people problems the final year stats um exam was what dropped my mark like by quite a bit just because of how difficult it was however i do want to highlight that once you get into field in the in once you you know further study psychology for example i'm at honors level and everything that i learned in the stats module is basically being applied at this at this level um so i'm not being tested on the statistics directly whereas in my first second and third year that's exactly what was going on which makes sense because they want you to be able to understand all of those concepts so when it comes time to be able to apply them you're able to do so and the good news is that later on there are systems and computers and processes that actually do it for you um, you don't have to do it but at the end of the day you need to be able to interpret that data be able to discuss it and maybe even publish it so that it makes sense and it backs up the research that you're trying to put forth so yes you get a pass on maths but you don't get a pass on maths moving on to number four you will write till your hands fall off so, so if writing is not your thing maybe don't get into psychology and if reading is not your thing also i would not advise that you get into psychology um simply because that's basically going to be your life now i remember being at a point where i was submitting a minimum of four essays a week for different subjects especially at undergrad level because there was a semester wherein i took seven um you know i took seven subjects and it's you know it's less now in terms of the number of subjects at honors level but Obviously, the amount of work and writing that is required is a lot more. On top of that, I have a thesis that I need to submit, and that is just way too many words for me to even put forth to you. But I mean, for example, one of the theses that we've been given, um, you know, as an example, um, so that we can see how we're supposed to compose a thesis is literally 60 pages. And that's nothing. Like master's level people will tell you, oh my, they wish theirs was 60 pages. By the time you get to master's level, it's probably way too many pages to count. And if you want to go ahead and get your PhD done, that's just a lot of writing that's a lot of reading that's a lot of research and your worst is with research you could literally you could literally read like a whole um article and then use two lines from that article and then you need to go find another article that you need to read so reading is basically going to be your life writing is going to be your life so if you're not into those things or you don't exactly like those things you either need to find a way to like it or to be okay with it or to tolerate it because 
that's basically going to be your life from here on out and apparently it doesn't get better once you qualify as a psychologist because you're going to need to be writing reports um, for clients for patients depending on the space that you work in there's assessments that are going to need writing so you don't exactly escape the writing not now um not ever it seems so if this is really not your thing i think think twice about it number five i wish that i knew to get experience don't wait until you are a psychologist to um, be in, you know, in, in, in a counseling space to don't wait until you're a psychologist, basically, to start trying to help people in, you know, various ways that you can. So at master's level, one of the things that they do is they take in your CV and they want to know, um, because the degree entails working with people, they want to know, have you worked with people to this point? As I mentioned, it's not just about your marks at the level but they want to know that you're actually eager and wanting to be um, you know in this degree and in this um, profession but they also want to know that you um, have taken it upon yourself to start you know engaging with people to start helping people like you say that you want to do because most of the people that get into psychology say it's because they want to help people so if you are wanting to help people you wouldn't really wait towards the end to actually do it so make sure that you um, start you know getting the experience before you even get to master's level volunteer at church if there's a counseling team at church um, I know at our church what they basically do is you 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 do I think a few weeks there's training that you actually get into um, there's a whole program that you go through um, with the the head of counseling their church who himself is qualified and then you basically get lay um, you you lay counsel for that time they tell you um, obviously you within certain limits because you are not um, qualified to a certain degree but because of some of the knowledge that they've given you you are able to start counseling there are helplines that um, allow you to do a similar thing where you take a course and after doing that course they allow you to be part of their call centers and you could be one of the people that um, is called when somebody is in crisis because you work for a certain helpline so things like that make sure that you volunteer um, if you're not able to volunteer at church um, old age homes hospitals whatever the case may be but make sure you get that experience experience that so that it shows you are working with people one of the things that i put on my cv is the fact that i was on radio um i don't know how this is gonna help me or if it's even going to count but there i gained a lot of experience in terms of um i had a, i hosted a lot of great um, um conversations around mental health with psychologists and i was able to network and know more and things like that so start getting the experience that you need um for the field um, before you actually get to master's level. I really think that is going to help so that once you compile your CV and compile your references as well as your motivational letter, they're able to see that, oh, this person is actually determined and motivated to be in a, um, this profession and the track record speaks for them because they've already been doing these things. They took the initiative to actually um, make sure that they contribute positively in people's lives. That is honestly going to help you. Let the track record show that you are wanting to be in this profession. And then by the time um, you get to master's interviews, they have no choice but to take it because you have the marks to back it up as well as the experience to back it up. I really hope this video was helpful to you. I really did enjoy shooting it. And till the next one, have yourself a fantastic whatever day of the week it is. Mwah.